Japan's cultural assets are a physical record of the nation's long history. These take many forms, from architectural structures to works of art. Major items like national treasures and important cultural properties have been carefully preserved, sometimes even locked away out of view. But because of this, they have often not been scientifically analyzed or had basic data recorded. Over the course of centuries, it's impossible to avoid some damage and deterioration occurring. So in order to ensure the accuracy of future restoration work, we need to make scientifically precise records of their present condition. With these records, we can restore cultural assets to their present state. The ancient capital of Kyoto is home to many cultural properties. From his base here, Professor Ari Ide is creating a digital archive of these treasures. Many cultural properties have been damaged or destroyed over the years by earthquakes, tsunamis and typhoons. These objects form our memory of historical times and it's important to protect and preserve them. Professor Ide specialized in electronics and used this knowledge to develop the world's first ultra-high resolution scanner. The scanner projects a uniform beam of light at an object. The reflected light is picked up by sensors and converted into a digital image. The accuracy of a digital image is given by the number of picture elements, or pixels. Professional digital cameras currently produce images with about 20 megapixels. Professor Ide's scanner is 900 times more accurate at 18 gigapixels. The scanner was used to capture the painting on this 3.6 meter wide screen. Zooming in, we can clearly see the faces on tiny figures that are just five millimeters high. This major temple dates back to the 12th century. Professor Ide is leading a project to scan one of its most treasured folding screens. Scanners like this could weigh over 500 kilograms and were very difficult to transport. Professor Ide's new scanner weighs less than 100 kilograms and can be disassembled for carrying. The scanning process begins. Light is produced by two types of LEDs, one emitting visible light and the other infrared. Visible light is first used to scan this depiction of the sun. This is the resulting image. It's a precise record of the condition of the thin gold leaf. Infrared scanning enables us to see more than just what appears on the surface. We can also look at lower, hidden layers. Here is the painting scanned with infrared light. We can see an underlayer where some parts have gone dark. It seems that these parts were originally silver. Presumably, the artist did this to make the sun look a certain way. Many such mysterious techniques were used in the making of this screen. This scanner records not just the colors and shapes we can see, but also those concealed beneath them. Such data is an indispensable aid for future restoration work. Professor Ide realized his technology had applications beyond creating a digital archive. At the World Heritage Site of Ninnaji Temple, Professor Ide has scanned its famous Kannondo Hall murals to produce a virtual reality experience. The Kannondo has always been closed to the public. But through the magic of this technology, we can now take a vividly realistic virtual tour. Miyako is a port on the Pacific coast of Tohoku. It suffered severe damage in the earthquake and tsunami of 2011. Professor Ide's device was used to scan this detailed map of the region from 150 years ago. Comparing the old record with today's landscape, 
is helping planners design ways to mitigate future disasters. It allowed us to see the courses of old rivers, which have long been buried under roads. The tsunami flowed inland along these rivers. We now realize how dangerous such hidden things can be when disaster strikes. An ultra-high resolution scanner revealing the vital meanings hidden in historical artifacts. 